Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Astral Chain. Now that we are in the Astral Plane for File 8, we are not that far off from our fifth and final Legion, the Axe Legion. We're getting it this late in the game for kind of a solid reason. It's because the Axe Legion, compared to the other four, is incredibly overpowered. It's ridiculous how good this one is. Ooh, this is a pretty opportune time for that hit rush to be going off. Since I can just call the doggo out. Or my arm boy. And let the Arrow Legion plink away while we combo it down. I think I'm going over the... Yeah. <laughs> I hate when that happens. That's so annoying. <laughs> We also have to go and find Akira, too, who has rushed in headstrong, as he's done so many times before, because we may or may not be running into Max. I mean, the Axe Legion is certainly an indicator that Max might actually have survived that initial encounter when the Legions turned. But that's going to have to remain a mystery until we at least catch up with Akira and the Axe Legion. In the meantime, uh, I usually go over how the style systems work, or not the style systems, but the stylish rankings in games like this work and break them down. But I don't think I actually ever did that for this one, so let me fix that real quick by explaining our end of verse or end of fight rankings. I think what throws a lot of people off is how differently Astral Chain weighs different factors for its individual uh, case rankings or fights compared to really any other Platinum game, or Devil May Cry for that matter. Uh, they're all... Ooh, this is a really good position for this one. Couldn't quite land that last hit, though. Got away too quick. There we go! Interrupted his attack. Oh, that feels good. Um, so all of the games are slightly different in how they rank you, but I think this one is the most different. Or at least it feels the most different from the others. And especially from Devil May Cry or Bayonetta, uh, two of the most popular in this genre. They really distilled down what matters for an S or a pure platinum into how clean the fight went, how stylishly you fought, and how long it took to get the W. And that last one is important because it's the game pushing you to not only be clean but aggressive instead of avoiding damage by just turtling up, dodge rolling away from all the action all the time, and just, you know, exclusively running away and shooting or something you would have like 10 minute fights in which you wouldn't get hit. <laughs> so congrats, pure platinum on not taking any damage. Big ol' F for style or timing. Astral Chain, this part is kind of cool actually. Uh, at least one of these, because it's a little more puzzly. Astral Chain puts everything on a scorecard, like everything. And then it vomits that information at you in such a way that it can be hard to discern what really matters. Unless you are really spending a lot of time and attention breaking that down. In that way, it's more of a problem of presentation than anything. Because in Bayonetta, for example, it's still weighing a boatload of factors. It's just collecting a lot of them under a few, uh, a few smaller umbrellas. What? I don't remember that. Is that just a trip mine, or did that happen to open up at the exact moment I passed over that area? <laughs> what is that? Is it, okay. Yeah, fool me once. Can't get fooled again. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> so in uh in Bayonetta. It's collecting a lot of the information that you would see in something like Astral Chain here, just under one umbrella. Like, a lot of the factors that get weighed in are just pushed under that umbrella of stylishness. It's just a combination of things like damage done, 
uh, chaining things together so you don't drop the combo, and variation. It's just a bunch of things broken down into one category to make it a little more digestible at first glance. In Astral Chain, everything is scored in a really granular way instead of a tiered way as well, and it's all thrown at you all at once, which makes it a little more confusing. Uh, again, in Bayonetta, to use that as an example, it's tiered such that, uh, say, you beat a fight in 30 seconds or less. That's a pure plat. Congratulations, 30 seconds or less. You did it as well as you can be expected to have done it. If you do it faster than that, great. 31 to 45 seconds? Well, that's maybe a gold, but it's more of a range of times. In Astral Chain, it's more like there's a point value attached to every single second, and every second that ticks down, you're losing just a few points. And then, by the end of the fight, they just add all the points up. Um... Well, we have to drag all these pillars around. Which me oh god damn it, this elevator. Which means we have to have this platform in place so that we can get to all of them, because they're all on disconnected little islands, and then we have to move this over, then everything will be fine. See what I mean? It's a little more puzzly, and it's kind of cool in that way. Fortunately, we have to move the Arm Legion out of the way because of the gap, which is dumb. <laughs> there we go. There was a little gap. So, what gives you points in Astral Chain? Uh, the big one I've been emphasizing is time. Time is weighed more heavily than just about anything else by a really wide margin. Being fast is the most important thing to getting good rankings. Uh, that shouldn't have happened, that's a lie. <laughs> Uh, the other thing is managing the limiter meter, getting a lot of sync attacks off. Uh, like, you get... It's strange, because that's tiered in a way. Like, you get uh, the regular sync attack bonus for just a couple, and then once you do a bunch of sync attacks, it also gives you, like, uh, what's it called? The sync attack master or sync attack expert as a bunch of bonus points on top of that. Then there are the stuns and chain binds, which are weighed separately. Uh, hitting an enemy from behind is weighed more heavily than sloppy strikes from the front. Using lesion abilities, uh, perfect calls, some things are also opportunity costs. Like, you don't necessarily get penalized for item use. Oh! The Bertolds. Uh, these guys just want to rush up at you and just give you a big ol' explosive hug. So, Arrow Legion and Gun, it is. This is not a ranked fight, though. <laughs> we would get a pretty good bonus for it be if we're going by fast, though. Uh, uh, um. Right, uh, some things are, what was I saying, opportunity costs. Uh, like, you don't necessarily get penalized for item use in that there's not a score subtraction but you do get a bonus for not using items. So you do effectively get penalized for using them. Oh, I hate all the block pushing shit they do with the arm, and there's more in the next file, and I can't stand it. Luckily, this is nothing, it's just an inconvenience. This is not a, a sliding block puzzle, because all you have to do is move this one aside, uh, or this one forward so you can move the other one aside so you can get to the one in the far upper right. It's dumb. It's busy work. <laughs> it's busy work. Uh, crucially though, playing clean does not matter that much. Aside from the fact that getting hit or stunned means you spend less time attacking, which in turn means those seconds that are weighed so heavily just evaporate while you do nothing to bring the fight closer to an end. Thank <laughs> you. 
the string section right before the fight music kicks in reminds me so much of a track from Donkey Kong Country 2. And I can't place which one, but if anyone knows, I would appreciate uh, an assist. I'm tagging you in, in the comments. Uh, and yeah, we, we can dem demonstrate uh, some of what... Some of the peculiarities of the ranking system in this fight. Like, we will do this really, really fast, but it's not going to be a clean fight. I'm definitely going to take a bunch of hits just speeding through this. That works out nicely, though. Also, the reason I love the Axe Nemesis fight, or at least like it, uh, is because it's ostensibly the Arm Legion fight in a much bigger arena. And that's all the Arm Legion fight really needed to be good. Uh, so when we use the Arm Legion, speaking of which, to grab these, we can throw them at the Axe Legion's barrier to instantly break it and stun him for a bit. One of, one of the most important environmental aspects of this fight, especially to doing it quickly. Honestly, it almost prioritizes speedrunning more than it does stylish action. Obviously, you want to be using your abilities and swapping legions in and out a lot if you're going for the rankings, but generally, generally, that's because it'll lead to the fight ending faster, more so than the smaller score bonuses. Plus, the priority number one, as always, of course, just being have fun doing it, and swapping legions in and out is one of the fun parts of the game. And I cannot emphasize that enough. Always, always prioritize the... Oh, we just threw that straight off the cliff like it's a fire axe, huh? Uh, always prioritize the intrinsic fun of combat, especially in a game like this that gives you so many options for the combat and ways of playing expressively and navigating so much chaos. Like, look at this. This is rad. Always prioritize what lets you have the most fun rather than what gives you a little extrinsic dopamine hit. Oh, shit, we're getting hit by every one of these because I timed the very first dodge wrong, so now I'm getting hit by every subsequent follow-up spin. <laughs> this is going to be fine, though. This is going to be an S+. Plus. Easily, easily, easily. And sometimes going for the S+, plus or the pure platinum, is intrinsically fun to go for. But if you're finding yourself more frustrated or bewildered by the ranks than enjoying them, don't worry about doing that. It's immaterial to the game anyway. Just play in a way that maximizes how much fun you're having. And now we have... Yeah, what did I tell you? Got a couple perfect calls in there. Wasn't even worth that many points in comparison to uh, the timing, the time it took. Dad. Hey, rookies. Who told you you could take those helmets off? Those things aren't just for show, you know. You're police now. You're not civilians anymore. You gotta follow police regulations. Yeah, yeah. You've said that a hundred times. We know. Hey, since when were you a stickler for the rules anyway, Dad? Uh, you're not exactly filling me with confidence. I still really don't get it. You know... I never expected you guys to grow up to be police. Didn't even tell me you'd signed on. Come on, Dad. It's obvious. We want to save the world like you. Just wait and see. You don't have to fight alone anymore. Do you even hear what you're saying, kiddo? Uh, <laughs> just focus on not getting yourselves killed, okay? Roger. Saying Roger is one thing. Do you really get what I mean? Anyway, just don't make me bail you out too much. Got it? Something wrong? Nah, it's nothing. All right. Hey, you over there. Do me a favor. Hey, babe, what are you doing? 
This is a big day for you. Come on, say cheese. And that's definitely not going to be an S plus on the overall ranking because we skipped a lot of side missions. That's okay though. Hey, we got the Marie Cap. File nine luckily does not have uh, quite the pacing problems that some of the other files have had. Because as we ramp up into the end game. That, like, the, the slow-paced intros to each file cut it a little bit less and less. And they're aware of that. My name is Jenna Anderson. I come to bring you your future. People of the Ark, your time is drawn to a close. There are those who would use your fear to sell you a false piece, building a cage around you with lies. They will ask you to sacrifice everything for their ambition. But such ambition can only lead to damnation. There is another way, and soon I will show it to you. Oh, we'll get out there and find Jenna. But first, how do you feel about menus? <laughs> we have not been in this menu in particular in a hot minute because I have been hoarding those gene codes, been saving up my little treasure chest, built a war chest for the Axe Legion, just been patiently biding my time. And right away, one of the first skills of the Axe Legion is one of its unique skills. And it's the Blue Shield, which... It's pretty nice in a lot of different ways. Uh, it gives you a shield that absorbs, just straight up absorbs, uh, three hits. And that, I cannot emphasize enough is a really potent ability, and it's maybe not even one of its strongest abilities. Uh, power Charge is something people really love to use with the Axe Legion, and I understand why. I tend to go with Blue Shield and Another, which we should be getting to. I think it's right next to Power St Yeah, Speed Star. So Speed Star, I would ignore it out of hand if all it was was a movement speed buff. 
not to discount how important movement speed can be, because the faster you reach your target, the faster you can start doing damage to it. Uh, movement speed is generally a DPS increase, and that goes for pretty much anything. Uh, like, something that a lot of people didn't realize in WoW for a long time was that if you got any kind of movement speed uh, buff on your on your equipment, it was a DPS gain, because the less time you have to spend moving, the more time you have for just dealing damage. That's not why Speed Star is so good, though. That's part of the reason. But also, it's an attack speed increase. Uh, did I save any of my good stuff? For the Axe Legion, any of my good ability codes. I don't want to spend too much time on this. I might attack this a little bit more off screen. Because I really did not seem to set anything particularly tasty aside for, uh, for him. Not that that's even that bad of a thing, to be honest. He, The Axe Legion is good no matter what you put on him. You can definitely min-max the shit out of him. And we'll get our blue shield on X, and on Y we have Speed Star. Yeah, that sounds great. We'd better hustle. Okay, hop in. I've got a good feeling about this one. Let's... Looks like you got there in one piece. They're almost done evacuating the civilians from Harmony Square. It should be nearly deserted. The local police are already there on watch, but they may need your help if anything comes up. You two have been assigned to the central intersection under the skywalk. Secure your surroundings and head over. There's no telling what could happen right now, so stay sharp. Harmony Square has been cleared out. So this area really only exists for one or two side quests. And then to move us along. Once we take point there, we won't be able to head back to HQ for a while. You ready? An explicit point of no return declaration. Okay, let's go. All who tremble in fear, desperate, listen to my voice. Soon, very soon, I will bring you justice. I will open the gates to our true future. Abandon fear, and you will know true peace. Over there, Jenna! How foolish. You people are leading all of humanity straight to damnation. Straight to damnation? You're the terrorist here! You don't understand. My heart goes out to you too. All because of how you were born. Doomed to be used by those idiots until you die. Chained to your fate. 
powerless. Stay quiet and open your eyes. I might even save you. What the hell? Might surprise you to learn that Homunculus Delta, while having some of the problems, whoops, that's the wrong Legion, of uh, other Homunculi fights, is actually my favorite one. We'll have to see why next time. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.